Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Everett Minshall. I'm a data scientist and machine learning engineer. Today, I wanted to show you how you could connect to a trading, uh, I guess, partner. Um, and today we're gonna look at Oanda. Uh, Oanda is a sort of trading platform that you can connect to algorithmically to push through market trades for FX. Um, and, it, and other types of leverage securities, CFDs and whatnot. Um, Oanda is really popular. Um, if you're into algorithmic trading or trading in general, FX markets, you probably um, have heard of them. If not, uh, I like them because you can set up a demo account up here and you can practice different strategies that you've come up with or even just try to trade based on the candlestick charts here. So we're going to talk about how to connect to this in the back end. What you'll need to do is get your account number, which you can get from Manage Your Funds. And then if you click over here on the API, it will show you the API as well. Um, I've already gotten my token, but if you click this button, it'll show you the API key that you can use. And from there, you can connect to Awanda to grab data and to push market orders. So the code I'm going to show you is directly taken from Yves Hilpish. Um, he wrote uh, Python for Algorithmic Trading, which was one of the first books I bought about the subject. And you can find it there. But he's also got a GitHub repo that goes through how we can connect to it as well. So if you want to look at the source material, I'll provide it in the G Google Colab. Otherwise, this is just going to be a video version of that code. Uh, I have made some adjustments because the tutorial was written quite a few years ago. So I've, I've made some adjustments to make it work, but by no means is this should I be taking credit for it at all. So let's go ahead and zoom in here so you guys can see what I'm doing. I also want to note before we get started, just as this is not financial advice. So please be careful if you do intend to spend your money on this. Um, I highly, highly suggest that you do not spend your money uh, based on anything you, that you watch in my videos. Uh, I don't think I've done anything really that ha I don't. I have definitely haven't built anything that would, um, you know, that would make you money. So just be careful. But okay, let's get into it. The first thing that we'll want to do once we get connected is install the TPQOA um, repo. That is what I was just showing you. It doesn't take too long to do that. The other thing that you'll do is you'll put your, um, essentially you'll keep your account ID and access token in a file called awanda.cfg in this kind of format. You'll need a header called awanda. And I mounted it to my drive here. So I have it here um, in my drive. And you can see awanda.cfg. So it should pull that in. And now we can start using tpqoa which is an easier, I think, SDK version than just using the API itself. So we can call get instruments, and we're just going to call the, you know, the first 15. And you can see these are all the different trading pairs that are available. We could just call all of them. I am kind of curious to see what it looks like for all of them. And there's a whole big giant list, which makes sense because there's combinations of different currencies um, so cool. So we know how to grab uh, the instruments that we're interested in doing that, but how do we actually get data? So we're going to call Euro to USD. We're going to do start date from 2020 to 10. We can do 2020 to 12. In fact, let's actually make this more up to date. So let's do 2024 there. Let's do 2024 there. And let's do uh, four. 
and let's do four. So we're going to get two days worth of data on the minute, one minute mark, and price M, I believe, is going to be open, high, low, close volume, complete, excellent, cool. So when we call data.info, this is what we receive here. And let's just go ahead and look at the data itself. Nice. So it comes in as a as a data frame. And you can see the volume comes with complete, which is just true. I, I'm assuming that just means it's a complete list of things. Oops, that's not going to work. I forgot the O. All right, so you get the idea. That's how we can grab data. You can do different granularities if you want. So one thing in the book that we can do just to iterate how to use Awanda is to set up a momentum back test or to set up a momentum the idea is that we'll use a momentum strategy, but first let's backtest it by getting our returns. And we'll append the different momentum time frames into a column after we uh, grab the rolling momentum average and throw that into the column for our data and then we'll append it to our list here. From here, we can plot it. These are just style formats here, but we're going to plot our strats, which will be our returns from the data, and we'll put it all into one good thing and plot it, and this is what it looks like. So you can see strategy 120 is definitely killing it, and something happened around 410 uh, 12 here that made it oh, okay yeah so I don't know what happened here that made things go so crazy for everyone but it must have been a big day and you can see that the strategy from there has changed but the momentum on the 120 obviously captured the best there I think that might have been a fluke that's really interesting So I'm guessing since it's minute by minute, uh, that's quite a lot of data, right? So certainly something happened in these these minutes that happened around 4:10. Cool. But part of um, part of working with FX or working with CFDs is that you're you can use leverage, so you can um, basically put greater you can put down greater trades because you can actually leverage your shares. So if we take into account the leverage and margin to our strategy, you can see that we kind of get a similar thing. It's just exponentially larger because the leverage is amplifying uh, how well or how poorly we're doing, right? Cool. So we know how to pull data and we know how to do a simple momentum trading and we know how to back test it to see if it's something that's worth trying. Um, but let's say we want to stream the data. Uh, the GitHub repository TPQA provides a stream data uh, class or method and you just pass in the instrument and we're going to stop it after 10. So let's go ahead and stream it. Cool. And you can see this is uh, in real time. So I'm recording this on the 25th, 2024. And we're pulling in the prices here. And here's the timestamp, of course. If we want to create an order, we just put in create order for the instrument. We're throwing in a thousand, so we're buying 
a thousand here for our position and it will provide you oops, it will provide you the ID and a JSON format, all the things that we might be interested in our order. Um, so a thousand units for you euro to USD. Um, there's our factor converter. It's even got a full VWAP. It's got the price, the full price here. Um, bids, liquidity, asks, uh, closeout bid, closeout ask, market order. So it provides us a ton of information. I could put in another order. So now we're going, so we went long a thousand here, but now we're going short. And if I create another order for 500, that's bringing us back to a zero position. So you get the idea. You just need to create an order, pass through the instrument and the units that you want. Cool. So now let's put all of this back together and we're gonna focus on doing another momentum trading uh, strategy here. So we're gonna create a class we're going to pass through TPQA, TPQA, um, of course, for our momentum trade, we'll need the position, the instrument, the momentum, the bar length unit. We're going to store our raw data as a data frame, and the minimum length will be the momentum plus one. Cool. So on success, this will be the one that takes actions when a new tick data arrives. And here we're really just grabbing the raw data of the tick value and we are placing it in a data frame so that we can easily understand it. We're then calculating the returns in the position. So we're doing a quick calculation uh, kind of up here. And based on that information, will begin the trade. So if our position, if we have a, if we have a position, um, then we're going to create an order, uh, or else we'll, we'll sell the order, right? Um, if we have a negative position, if we're going short, then it's the opposite of what we're doing, um, when we're placing a long order here. And this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. It makes, I think it makes more sense when we pass through the actual conditions of our momentum trade, but just know that whatever we decide to bid as our momentum and whatnot, we can, we can do that in the bar length and the units that we're starting with. Right? So here we're going to pass through the Owanda CFG because that's what helps us connect to the, um, API. We're passing through our instrument, which is Euro USD. Bar length is 10 seconds. The momentum is six. Um, we could also try something else, but we can do six because I think that'll actually create trades when I do it. And we're doing 10,000 units. And then once I hit stream data, it'll stop after 500, um, but it will, you can see before I've been creating all these trades, but let's hope it, uh, momentum trade. Oh, whoops, it's because I forgot to run this guy. There we go. So it's counting because it's not gonna make a trade based on every single tick, right? It needs to get the momentum from the raw data that it calculates and then when it meets our parameters for the momentum trade, it will either put in a, a buy or a sell. So hopefully here pretty soon, we'll see it put in a buy or a sell. It's taking a lot longer than it did last night when I was testing this. So I don't know what's going on in the market right now to make it so stable but let's keep at it until we get a few trades just so you get the idea and actually believe me when i say this code works there we go okay so as you can see it just put in an order here 
So let's check it out. Order 35 USD. Put in a $10,000 order there. For a price of 107. Just put in another one. It went short 20,000 units there for your USD. Cool. So you get the idea. So now it's putting in a lot more orders. Just re, it just put in another buy. I don't think we really need to watch this thing go over and over again, but it is kind of cool, right? Just to see it um, doing its thing. Um, so this is a really good way to connect and stream data and then make decisions based on that data. And um, there's really no way to kill it if we don't hit that first 500 mark. So I'm just going to interrupt the interrupt the the execution of this. And we can just close out the position by um, saying that our units is just the position times the units and pass through pass through this. So I just closed out uh, everything that we had. Um, cool. So let's say you've been trading for a bit and you want to call the account information to see where, how well you're doing in your account. Get account summary. And it'll pull together, you know, primary USD, your balance, um, user ID here, time created, P&L, profit loss. You see I did really poorly there. Our, the financing um, take, tells you all this stuff. Margin. Um, so remember, this is practice. So in the CFG, it will automatically assume that it's practice. And I haven't hooked up any funds to the Owanda API. So even if you're a little bit worried about messing that up, just don't connect your credit card or your wallet to it, and you'll be OK. And if you want to get transactions, you can do that too using this little code, and it will tell you the uh, the different actions that it took. And you can also just print the transactions using this to get it in a little bit more user-friendly way. Cool. And that concludes uh, connecting to the Oanda API. Uh, basically, this is sort of just promoting the TPQOA package that helps you connect to it and put in these kinds of orders. But we can swap out this momentum class for different types of uh, other strategies if we'd want. Um, and we can stream data. You might get an idea of what I'm getting at here. I think with Awanda, what I'm going to do is train. I'm going to train a reinforcement model to trade FX. And then I'm going to see if I can actually connect it to Owanda because I've been trying to connect it to Alpaca, but I have been struggling really hard. And I think this is maybe going to be a little bit easier for me to do. So I just wanted to show you guys this because I thought it was really useful. Um, please, again, this is not financial advice. Please, like, I've never done anything in my channel that would like actually make you money. So please, please be careful when you do, if you do, if you do intend to spend your own money, uh, please use extreme caution. I don't think I've made anything on my channel that will make you a millionaire. So please be careful.